Lord bless us and guide us and take us through this that he's got planned for us. I mean, this is his word. This is the last little section that he showed me about uh, just this, all this theme that he's he's claimed. He's he's the one that's made this theme throughout these little sessions. It's uh, Matthew 18, verse 20. This once again, this is the verse he wants me to start out with. So this is what we do. Matthew 18, 20. So is, is Jesus glorified through this. This is about Jesus. This is what he teaches. It's, I'm just a parrot repeating what he's given to me. So it's nothing to do about me. Matthew 18, 20, it says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Two or three. Not always thousands. Doesn't have to be hundreds. Just two or three. Lord leads you this way and there's just two or three of you. Be confident that this verse is true. Jesus said he would be there in the midst. He's there. He'll take care of the situation. He'll show you what he needs to show you. Whatever God's called to do, that's that's what it is, okay? It's his word. He He's truth is in his word. He He holds his word. He confirms his word. He's That's who God is. God delights in the truth. He delights in keeping his word. It's who God is that we serve. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Thank the Lord Jesus Christ for introducing us to the Father. Thank him so much. Here's what we're going to go into now, and this is the book of Luke. Book of Luke chapter 4. What's getting ready to happen here is what a lot of us, we may be uncomfortable in these situations. We may be, we may think that every time we get together, that everything's going to be uh, run smoothly, that everything's going to be okay. But we're going to learn a little bit of something here about not just anything, but a synagogue. A synagogue was uh, basically a place like a lot of our churches are right now. One man was the pastor. He had several people that helped and did little things. But they were kind of a resembling of a little church. A group of people would get together and do what? Discuss the law. That's what they're doing, okay? So this is basically like a little Bible study time, okay? This isn't in the temple. This is just aside from the temple. The synagogue is just a little place where they would come together, okay? So it's a lot like our churches would be. Um, but look, look what happens here. We're going to learn a little bit about the, Jew, the Jewish way, the Hebrew way of doing things, and then we're going to compare that to the way we do things nowadays in our churches, okay? What happens here, we're going to start in Luke uh, chapter 4 and verse 14 is where we're going to start reading. It says, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame, a fame through all the region around about. And he taught in their synagogues and being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went in the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Now you see this a lot through Jesus' life. You read their traditions, the way they did things. Uh, the minister, sure, he would bring the what he felt like, but there, but people would stand up. And if somebody stood up in one of their services, then they knew that they were they were going to read something. There was something in there that they felt like they had some interpretation, some understanding that God had given them. They were given the freedom to do so. Okay. So I want to point out right off the bat, though, that Jesus went, this is Jesus' hometown again. This is where Jesus is from. Okay. Why is that important? Why? Because a lot of us, that's what happens to us. We may still be in the place where it all started. We may still be in the place where Jesus has called everything or begun everything in our lives. And how are they going to see us? Well, they're going to see us as who we used to be. This is, this is something we're going to see through here that Jesus is led by God to read these verses, to give a little bit in depth, understanding what he has, who greater than the Lord Jesus Christ, but also to remind us that he went through this. The rest of us are probably going to go through this too. Okay. Look right here. It says that uh, he stood up to read. So he stands up and look, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. 
So he found the place where this was written at. Wasn't like it was just open there. He looks around for a little bit. So Jesus knows the word of God, of course. I mean, that's not a surprise to a lot of us, but to some it might be. So Jesus looks specifically. Where is he looking for? Uh, I've read this several times. I know this is in Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61 is where he reads these same things, okay? And look what it says here. It says in, uh, in verse 18, Let's go back here just for a minute, though, because I want to read to you Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61, verse 1, it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. All right, now let's read what Jesus read right here in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set liberty, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And then there's a period. That's where Jesus stops. One thing I'd like to point out, no surprise to many of you, I'm sure, is that in over here in Isaiah 61 and verse 2, it doesn't stop. Right there at acceptable year of the Lord, it says, and the day of vengeance of our God is the rest of that verse, to comfort all that mourn. Well, one thing that we need to understand is that day of vengeance of the Lord hasn't come yet. That day of the vengeance of the Lord would be that great tribulation. That day hasn't been here yet. So Jesus stops where he needs to stop. He stops in the middle of a sentence in the middle of a sentence. He stops at a comma. He stops right there. Why? Because he knows. This much has been fulfilled. The rest hasn't happened yet because look what he's getting ready to say. It says right here, and he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogues were fastened on him. So everybody, he stands up. Now, once again, he's not scheduled to share this day. He's not the invited preacher. He's not the invited guy that shows up to church. He's not the guy that everybody's waiting to hear from. He just goes in as his custom was. He goes in. It's his right as a Jewish person to go into the synagogue to stand. Whenever he stands, they call him up. He speaks, the, he, he shares whatever's on his mind as far as the word, whatever understanding he gets. Then he sits back down. He's been doing this since he was a little boy. We see that throughout the Bible. So what happens here? Everybody, he stands up, he reads the verses, and then he goes and sits. A little different than a lot of times. Usually they stand up there and they finish. This time he sits down. When he sits down, look what happens. He says, and he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. So this day the words that I've just read are fulfilled in your ears. Well, what does that mean? That means that he's saying right there, my understanding from God, because he stands up and he says, the spirit of the Lord's upon me. In other words, I'm the one that was called to do these things. I'm the one that God chose to do these things. And then he sits down. Look what they say about him. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, now everybody in there heard what he said, but they all say, look what it says. Is not this Joseph's son. You see, that's how it is in this world. You go back to where you were called. You go back to the place where everything started in your life, whatever change that may be. Don't expect those people all the time to be jumping up and down and happy. Why? Because those people are always going to see you as what? 
Joseph's son. That's what they see the Lord Jesus Christ as. Ain't this that kid from that carpenter? Who's this? How does what does this mean? Ain't this what? That's how it is. They're always going to see you as look that guy that was drunk all the time. That guy that was all the time hateful. That guy that don't you work at such such place? Don't you this, don't you that? You see, this is where respecter of persons comes in so much. Why? Because whether they understand it or not, the person that they lift up all the time, the great evangelist that shows up and, oh boy, he's got it, he's just somebody's son too. He's just somebody who used to be in sin and God's the one who saved him. Isn't that the way it is? Aren't we all come short of the glory of God? The pastor that they hold up above everybody else, isn't that just the same thing? Isn't that just another man? So why is it is it why is it that this stuff happens? This little thing right here is to help us. And you say, well, how's this about a Bible study? Here's what happens when you get to these Bible studies. Here's what happens when you get into churches. You get somebody that's come in for years and they are this drunk, they are this person, and all of a sudden their life changes. God comes in, God wipes them clean, God calls them, God starts to use them. What happens? What happens is, the truth is, a lot of times this is exactly what happens. People start to think, well, what's the, I mean, they're just so-and-so. See, we let the devil come in and we let the devil start to do things to us. But look, this isn't something that's brand new. This is something that happened to the Lord Jesus Christ right here too. And we need to be aware of it. We need to be aware that a lot of times we need to forget the fact that what this person used to be. We need to look and see what is this person bringing to the table. Are they bringing to the table word of God? Jesus did the same thing. Look how they accept the way that they accepted him and they received him. I'm nobody. There are the, for me to expect anything different than Jesus got would actually be crazy. Why? Because he's Lord of Lord and King of Kings and they didn't accept him. Why would they accept me or anybody else out here? You say, well, but so this is going to happen a lot of times. Yeah, it's going to happen a lot of times. Somebody may get something that blows your mind. How in the world did that person get that? Well, it's because it's God's chosen. See, that's what it says right here. It says, that's what Jesus said. He didn't say, I'm somebody. He didn't say, I'm the greatest. Look what. Look at the first top of this little verse right here in 18. This is what Jesus spoke. And everybody looked at everything else, but they didn't look to this. Why? Because look what he says. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. You see, we wouldn't be able to do nothing if that spirit of God ain't in our life. It's not about us. What we get to do is because God's in our life. What we get to do, the reason that man gets to share what he shares, gets to see what he sees, they got nothing to do with that man. It's the spirit of God on that man. So who should we praise? We should praise God. Praise God, why? That he sent this only son, that through his son, we might get salvation, and that spirit of the Lord would then come and give us this wisdom. But let's keep reading here. Why? Because this doesn't just stop here. This is exactly what happens when a true man of God comes into our houses. When a true man of God comes in, this is this sometimes is what's going to happen. And we don't think that, oh, well, that can't be a God situation. But look at this example of exactly what happens when God really comes into the house. What it says here says here in verse 23, and he said unto them, so Jesus isn't finished yet. (coughs) You will surely say unto me this proverb, physician, heal thyself. What about that? If I'm not mistaken, don't they tell him that on the cross? Jesus knew ahead of time all this was going to happen. Look what it says, whatsoever we have heard, Heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. See, Jesus right there, he knows. He admits it. He understands how men think. Truth is, is nobody wants to accept somebody that got saved in that house. Nobody wants to get accepted, that person. Oh, they'll accept the stranger. They'll accept the one that comes from afar off, but they don't want to accept their own people. 
their own people should just stay where they're at, should just keep doing the things they're doing. This is how it is. This is the truth that's in God's word. This is what happened to the Lord Jesus Christ himself. But I tell you of a truth. This is Jesus right here speaking. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias. And when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was wrought all the land, but unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarapta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. You know, that right there had to cut right through them. Why? See, they want all these miracles around them all the time. See, people want people want all this understanding. <coughs> oh, how come we can't get the wisdom? Or how come this one has it and this one don't? It's Look, a lot of times it's this simple. Jesus just told them. Jesus just told them right there. He said, look. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do all these here in thy country. So everybody wants everything. Why come you can't do these things here, but you can do them over there? Why can't the rest of us get these things? Why can't the rest of us see these things? Here's what Jesus is telling them straightforward right here. You know, Elias, if you look at Elijah's life and you read that's who he's talking about here. You look at Elijah's life. Guess what? There was a time that the, the heavens were shut up. There was no rain. And where did God send Elijah to? To this place right here, to the city of Sidon. You look on a map where the city of Sidon is, it's outside of Israel. So what he's basically saying is in order to God to keep his prophet from starving to death, he had to send him away from Israel. He had to get him out of Israel in order to have these things done. And they obviously knew where all this had happened. They'd read this about in the books. Jesus is telling them, you want to know why a lot of times you all don't get it, why this stuff doesn't happen? It's because of lack of faith is what he's getting ready to share here. Look what he says here. And any lepers were in Israel in the time of Elias, the prophet, and none of them were cleansed. Now here he's talking about Elisha. Elisha, you remember how he comes up to the leper and he tells him to go and dunk in the, in the thing seven times in that dirty water. Who was that man? That man wasn't a Jewish man. That man was a Gentile once again. And none of them were cleansed, saying Naaman the Syrian. Boy, that had to cut right through them. Why? Everybody wants all these miracles. Everybody wants all this wisdom from God. They want to see all these things and do all these things. And he's pretty much telling his own people right there, look, the reason you all don't see it is because God has to go outside of this place to do these things. He can't do them here. Right here, verse 28. So in other words... Let's, let's just stop for a second and let's rethink this just for a minute. Simplify it a little bit for, for, for my understanding. Jesus isn't the scheduled preacher of the evening because he hands the book back to the minister. The minister is the one who normally does these things. Jesus just stands up just to read. And when he stands up to read, he's no different than a man standing up to give a testimony. And when he stands up to give this little testimony, this little word that God's put on his heart, look what happens. Look what comes through. This is going to happen a lot of times in your meetings. This is going to happen a lot of times in your little Bible studies. Somebody may come in and give something that's going to make people upset because you're going to see what's going to happen right here in just a minute. This is ha This happens. And all they in the synagogue... And when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. <laughs> They're mad. Wrath is a pretty strong word. And rose up and thrust him out of the city. They picked Jesus up and didn't just throw him out of the synagogue. 
They threw him out of the town. They didn't want him in that town anymore. Now, this is the town that Jesus had come from. This is the town of Nazareth. We you look at verse 16, and he came to Nazareth. This is where he's from. This isn't just anybody. They know who he is. He's the son of Joseph, remember? And look, all he does is tell them those simple little things. And they pick him up and they throw him out of there. Out of the town. And led him unto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built. So they're leading him out to the edge of the city. And when they might cast him down headlong. They aim to kill him. They're sick of what he's just, they, he's made them so mad. Because why? Because he showed them where their fault is. He has just showed them what their problem is. And yet they're so mad at him, they're ready to kill him. You say, well, is this going to, I mean, are you saying that this could happen? This Look, this could happen a lot of times. We, th we think when the word of God comes all the time that the word of God's always going to pat us, always going to make us feel good. Look, the word of God came through Jesus right here, the Lord of Lord and King of Kings. And look at the reaction that people had when all he did was just tell them the truth. He read a little bit of scripture and then told them the truth. He explained to them these things. Why they couldn't see these miracles? Why these things weren't happening? He tells them. And what does it do? Makes them so mad they want to kill him. This is the word of God. But what you have to remember is that whenever there's two or three gathered together in his name, he's right there in the midst. If you stood up and you delivered the message the way God showed you, then just trust that God will take care of you. See, that this is this right here is what Paul, Peter, Stephen lost his life for. This is this is what it was right here. We hear a lot of messages, a lot of teachings, and I, Lord bless them and encourage them however he can. But we learn a lot of things about the Word of God that don't really prepare us for speaking the truth. You speak the truth, in God's word, and I'm not saying go out to start trouble. I'm just saying you get up and you just speak God's word and say the truth that God gives you and try to actually help by telling people the truth. Telling them that they need to stop spending so much time on television. Tell them they need to stop spending so much time with all these other things in the world. Drinking's not a good idea. Watching things on television that we shouldn't watch, not a good idea. Getting involved, men running around with other men, going to bars and hanging out all night. If you're married and got family, if you're not married and have family, get away from those places. Women thinking that, oh, it's okay, we can just go out and drink all night, what's the big deal? A lot of people have lost their lives. How many preachers and teachers have shared it? Oh, we don't want to hear you no more. Sometimes they get so mad that they, they don't want nothing to do with you. This is how it is. Stand up sometimes to give a testimony in church, just what God's put on your heart. Nobody likes it. Why? Because it's different than what everybody else has been in there saying. But yet, not in the will of God. This is all Jesus did. Jesus just stood up and said what God had put on his heart. Read the verses, spoke, and then told them. What God put on his heart. And look at the reaction. But look at verse 30 right here. What it says here. But he passing through the midst of them went his way. Truth is, is if God's in it, he'll take care of you. Now you have to realize that taking care of you sometimes is locking you in prison for a while. Paul understood that. Peter understood that. They considered it an honor to be whipped and beat just like the Lord Jesus was. Why? Because that's that was showing them that they were speaking the truth. You know what we do nowadays if we're going there and we're speaking the truth? Everybody's patting me on the back, telling me I did a great job. That's what we think by we speaking the truth. Oh, we got up and shared some powerful verses and all the brothers got up and said, Whoa, wow, that was strong, that was powerful, that was great. 
That's when we think, well, we've done what God told us to do. But look at the Lord Jesus. What did he get? He got kicked, beat, dragged out of town. They wanted to throw him headlong over the side of a cliff. Wanted to break his neck, kill him. That's when God's word's been shared. A lot of times that's how it is. I'm not saying that we have to always have that rod and beat and do it. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is I've noticed a lot in my life. There's times I get to share different things. But there's times that the messages and the little things that God has me share, boy, they crack. They, they hit like a hammer. They, they're that sword that cuts through. And I need them in my life. Why? Because I'm not faithful all the time. I, I need my eyes done this right here to keep walking this walk right behind Jesus. I fail. Thoughts come through my mind that I'm like, get out of there. Those don't belong there. I want to make it to heaven one day. I don't want to walk and wind up in hell after preaching all these years. After sharing and knowing God is my Savior, I don't want to be God turn around and throw me in that fire because I'm just as filthy as everybody else. No, I need those messages that not just dip a little bit on my toes. I want them to smash them so they quit going that road, so they get away from that stuff. A lot of times these little studies, they bring that strife. They bring those things that sometimes God uses the situation. See, we want to control everything so much, it's ridiculous. When God has those moments that his word's been spoken and he may be trying to free one person, just like Jesus saying here, look, I came to free these people that are bruised. I came to free these people that are captive. How do you free something? You break those chains. A lot of times that word gets stirred up in somebody that may be sitting there among you and all of a sudden they're feeling like, well, I don't know if I should share this or not. I don't know if I should. Look, share it. You don't know who that's getting ready to free. It may free you. You may realize, man, this is awesome. This is this is what we got to do. Yeah, that's what you got to do. Well, but it made a lot of people mad. Who cares who that made mad? Well, it, 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 we don't even know what the word offended means. Here, look right here. Look, what did Jesus do? You think anybody in town liked what he just said? No, they, it says they all heard him, and they dragged him to the corner. of the, They threw him out of the city. They didn't like what he had to say. Why should we expect any less? Why, why is this tied into that same verse? I feel from the Lord it's tied into it because we need to understand that these times are going to come. We're going to have those times that everything's not going to work out according to plan. You're not going to have the 45 minutes, the three songs, the two things, the this, that, and the other, and everybody jumping up and down. That's not always when God's word moves. God's word moves sometimes, and this right here is the reaction. Sometimes when God's word's preached, this right here is the reaction you get. Everybody's upset. Everybody's mad. But you know what? That's, that's We go back to that same thing. Iron sharpens iron. Spark flies. Something will come out of it. God's got a purpose for doing what he does. This right here, he has a purpose for this right here. I just, I pray that the Lord use this and help us understand that, look, Jesus went through this. We're going to go through this. Just, just realize that God can bring you out of anything and that Jesus is right there with you. He understands this situation right here more than a lot of us do. Just hang in there. Praise God. I've needed this in my life. I've needed this in my life, and I thank Jesus for showing me. I just, uh, may he use it to bless others, but I thank God that he showed me this right here, that, that he encouraged me to share this because I needed this in my own life. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank him for men that stand up and do this very thing that he did, that had this spirit of the Lord in them, that they preach that word like a hammer and then it cracks everything it needs to and it breaks every chain we have. Because in the Lord Jesus Christ and his holy blood, that's where freedom comes. I thank him for that. I thank him. And I ask forgiveness from him for my sins. Lord, I, ju I just want to stay faithful and just keep my head towards you. And I praise God for men and women that you have to share this, 
that help remind us that this is what we need to do and to keep our face right, right looking at you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord encourage those who preach the truth in God's word. May the Lord take his holy name, Jesus Christ, and spread it throughout the world that all men might know that there's salvation in him. 